In a Texas meeting yesterday, President Johnson... Join us as we congratulate Fox 13's John Wilson on 50 years of broadcast excellence. The Russians have launched what some say is their fourth unmanned space station to Venus. In a few minutes, this house will be the scene of a great deal of activity as movers come in and start the people who live here. Of course, uh, Walter Cronkite in the CBS Evening News is coming up next after tonight's editorial, and then, of course, the second round of the ACC. I guess I was inspired in high school when I saw Chet Unley, David Brinke, Walter Cronkite, Eric Severide, and Edward R. Murrow all on television every night. And I think what happened to me is that I really became passionate about this business because it was an opportunity to really, really connect with people. And when you get right down to it, I just love people. The Environmental Protection Agency says it may cost as much as $50 billion. I think John Wilson is standing by live in Atlanta, and I imagine, John, that the anticipation is growing. It is indeed, Cheryl, and something... And everybody who was a part of it in the early days, the golden age of television news, we all knew we were making history at the time because everybody watched television. Everybody watched the evening news. Uh, what we said on the air was important. You know, anchoring the news is the easiest part of what we do. Sitting here, reading scripts, reading off teleprompters, trying to get through ad libs, uh, all of that is relatively simple. What really is the workhorse of this, this profession is being on the scene is being where it is and talking to the people and corroborating what they say and how do you know what you know and the only way you do that is to get out is to, and be part of it. And this is where the stage is set for a showdown between striking miners who want to work and those who don't. Good evening, I'm John Wilson reporting live from all of this Gasparilla insanity from Franklin Street Mall in downtown Tampa. This is Kohimar Beach outside Havana, Cuba, if you can call this a beach. It's lava rock that's sharp with jagged edges that will cut through rubber sole shoes, but almost everybody here has rubber sole shoes in one way or another, or canvas or leather. There are no boots out here. The most distinguishing feature of the Forrestal when she joined the fleet in 1955 was her sheer size, 1,076 feet long. I want to be in a police car. I want to be on a fire truck. I want to be in a jet plane. And I've done all of those things. Those, those are the moments when you can speak with authority because you can say, I've been there. I've done that. You only find out who you are, who we are, who Tampa Bay is, what the face of Tampa Bay is when, when, you go, when you're there. And I can't tell you how important it was when I started to go to all the civic clubs. I've probably spoken all of them, in addition to all the nursing homes. Mary Kay and I performed in probably all of them, or most of them. Uh, but that's when we found out what was important about Tampa Bay. That's when you find out where the heart of Tampa Bay is in the clubs that service the community. That's why it was important for me to go out there. And also to go to these city council meetings. I went to all of them, especially the budget sessions. That's where you learn what's important. I don't look back at my career as something to, that stands out in such a big way, except perhaps to know that we're here every night telling people what they want to know. Oh, there have been incredible stories, been able to go to unbelievable places. Uh, Normandy was probably the most stunning trip, but there was also Romania, and there was Panama, and there was Washington at the White House. Uh, but nothing is more important than, than where we are right here in Tampa Bay. All of it comes together for me. I don't have anything that in my mind that really stands out as extraordinary, other than just what I call daily service of telling the news.